Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Fall Talk. Um, I may not be able to issue one tomorrow, uh, depending on my schedule, which means this could be the last one of the season, because we'll be, um, uh, I will not be issuing one on Halloween. Uh, it'll be a different type of blog, more than likely, for Halloween, um, but uh, not an official Fall Talk, because we'll be getting into the Winter Outlook. Uh, it'll be hitting as well. All right, so let's talk about today. Uh, we do have the front uh, now moving in on us. got a west wind. So it's uh, bearing down onto the area. All the showers have been way ahead of it in our southern counties. Not much showing up, though, locally uh, with the rain. Uh, water view shows the uh, setup of the front moving in. They've got snow. Look at that. Oh, isn't that pretty? About half a foot or so across the uh, higher elevations. Beautiful. All right. For us, all the rain is moving out. Not much rain fell, as expected. About a tenth of an inch. Some spots close to a quarter of an inch in our southern counties. But a lot of you were missed. And I'm sorry about that. Not that I'm apologizing for the weather. I just... Feel your pain. I knew the rain as well for uh, my grass seed <laughs> that I have planted. Late, I know. But I was hopeful we'd get some rain. All right, so uh, Futurecast does show that this afternoon. It's showing some sort of a rebound in our temperatures if we end up some breaks. With that cool flow of the northwest today, I I'm really doubting that. I think wherever we drop in the next few hours is more than likely we're going to stay. In fact, Indianapolis right now is 49 degrees. I'm going to get that cool. But 50s, sure. Now, we clear out tonight. And here's the key. We're going to clear skies out, have light winds, good setup here for some fog to develop, gentle east flow. Question is, how strong will those winds be? Uh, because if they're too gusty, it's only going to be valley fog. But if they're light enough, it could be more widespread fog. And Futurecast shows it drifting like that. See, it develops out of the east over the area just in time for the morning commute tomorrow. And our southern counties, because you guys did pick up the most rain, I think more at risk than Indiana. Uh, but we'll monitor this. Make sure to watch Sunrise tomorrow. We'll have an update and see how that looks. And then we'll make it for all this crummy weather tomorrow with another round of upper 60s, low 70s. That strong south wind arcing right at us. In fact, when you look at the temperature trend, a few things to note. And we, uh, that 70, by the way, was our high at midnight. Or I have that in the system. We will uh, likely not get back up there again today. Uh, 72 tomorrow. 82. Record is 83 for Saturday. A front does move in Sunday. Slight drop. The right now, your rain chance looks to be limited to around Cincinnati, so I think the rain chance out was only 10%. Just don't seem to be in a big deal right now. But only a slight drop in temperature. And then we get a south wind. Now, here's the question is how quickly we're going to warm up, especially for Halloween. Uh, it may be slower than what's shown here, but I'm going to uh, overachieve, if you will, on temperatures because I think with the dry ground, since we get that wind kicking in, I don't think it's going to take much. And that would tie the record for the warmest Halloween ever, and this would uh, certainly be a record for the uh, first day of November. And even this with tie record, 82 on Wednesday, back in 1987. So very warm weather moving our way as we head to the weekend. So this is the coolest day over the next seven, depending on perspective. So when are things going to change? Well, instead of going through all the different model maps, let me give you a general idea of what I'm looking at. Um, other meteorologists are looking at this well, I'm sure, because this is a hot topic right now. And that is the PV or the polar vortex doing its split right now. By splitting, which is a little ahead of schedule to be doing that, it is allowing for the jet to uh, basically get a trough develop here. And the specific jet's really just hammering the northwest part of the country. So we get more bridging in our area, warm weather. This is a warm pattern when it's split. But as we head toward the later portions of November, this is zero, by the way, we see it work its way to more of an organized area of polar vortex uh, concentration that takes place in this area in the very high latitudes. And uh, therefore, we begin to get then, at that point, a ridge back into the west and therefore a trough in our area, which would be our cool down we were talking about in your election day. The GFS, again, it has the split that is taking place now. Therefore, the ridging takes place in our area, troughiness over the far west. But as we head into November 12th, even on this, just after election day, you see that it also tries to get the pattern more organized, and then we get more of a general trough that develops in the eastern part of the country. So anything cool that comes our way um, that gets into the frost freeze potential uh, would likely happen when we see that take place. Now, how quickly that evolves in question. Model symptoms are too fast with that, and it may very well be uh, closer to mid-November, if not late November, before we see the change, which means more warm spells could very well happen, and that would be more record warmth. It is already the warmest October on record. And uh, for Louisville, anyway. So we'll see how it plays out, guys. And we'll cover a lot of this in the Winter Outlook, I promise. Uh, but just give you a sneak peek of what we're looking at. For those of you looking for some change in our weather, this is going to be the key driver. And until it changes, our weather will not.